It's a secret world used by criminals. The internet below the internet. The bit of the web you can't get to. Where criminals buy drugs, guns and paedophilia. Not only are our children and personal well-being in greater danger. It is hidden and it's anonymous. Its users are nigh impossible to trace. Dark web. Dark web. The dark web. Dark web. All right, guys. So we're we're about to enter the deep web. Feeling a little bit nervous about this, but uh, I think it's time. We made it. That really wasn't so bad. There are a few things more mysterious or misunderstood than the dark web. Thanks to an overload of online rumors and horror stories from the web, it's often difficult to separate fact from fiction. So what is it, really? Okay, so a good way to think about this is like a game of Pac-Man. Except, not Pac-Man. <clears throat> the first level of the game represents everything that you can access freely on the internet. Things that you can find through a search engine like Google or Bing. Pac-Man can see everyone and everyone can see him. Once Pac-Man gets a key, he can reach level two. Level two represents the deep web, the part of the internet which is not open to everyone. There is a barrier of some sort, usually something like a login or a password. If you've ever been onto Are You Connected, Ross, or even Gmail, then you've accessed the deep web. Here, Pac-Man can only see what he has unlocked. Most of it is just storage, and it's actually pretty boring. The final level Pac-Man can reach is level 3. And here we introduce the infamous dark web. This is the part of the internet that anyone can access at any time. But it's not monitored, and you can't access it through a search engine. What Pac-Man needs is some special software and an exact web address. He can go anywhere, find anything. But the only way to get what he wants is to already know where it is. So now that we have a rough idea of what it is, how do we actually get there? You need another layer of technologies to actually be able to access that. And there are, there are multiple competing technology sets. The most popular of those is, is the Tor network. And it, it's really just a piece of software that you need to run on a system. And instead of your traffic going directly to a website, it gets picked up and moved through this tour standing for the Onion router, a number of layers which obfuscate your, your actual, the, the address of your machine. Um, so you can connect to Tor and access the Rhodes webpage, but it'll appear as though you're coming from somewhere in the Netherlands or Brazil or somewhere else. Most of the dark web is made up of dark markets, where no matter what the item, if there's a demand, there's a supply. Effectively, they're, they're a marketplace that um, much the same as take a lot to Amazon. Um, and, and in some cases, with a, with, 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 a very with a very high degree of technical sophistication, where people can buy, sell goods and services. Um, they, they've got a reputation because most, a large number of them sell drugs. And they're, 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 I would say the primary focus of, of most dark markets is drugs by, drugs by mail. Even in small towns, such as Grahamstown, people are making use of dark markets. The alarming thing was that um, you've got a student town with a lot of people consuming a lot of MDMA, um, but none of it was actually MDMA. Um, I mean, like, it was really dirty speed meth, any amounts of random research chemicals. That's when I really thought, okay, here's, here's a point where, a point of entry, like I can get some good stuff off the dark net. Um, it's fairly reliable and easy. Um, and maybe people can actually have some decent quality substances in this town. Immediately, it was the appeal of being able to source literally anything you want in terms of substances and for there to be 
verified users where there was testing information of the purity of all of these substances. Instead of going and finding some shady guy in a bar or in an alley, you can go click, 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 and you get your drugs delivered to you. Nothing is constant on the dark web. Markets can disappear just as quickly as they emerged. These dark markets are almost entirely self-regulated and rely on a system of trust. Essentially, a vendor will put up their profile with, I guess, zero reviews and they'll have no... It's, it's like street credit, so, you know, like there's, there's like a rating on the site, but that rating is generated simply by other users. The thing is, you need to keep your wits about you, because on the other hand, there have been people who've ordered, like, a kilogram of weed and gotten a kilogram of beet sand. When ordering goods on the dark web, payments are usually made using a cryptocurrency, such as Bitcoin. The premise behind a cryptocurrency is it's anonymous, like cash, but it's digital. How a dark net market operates is generally an escrow. So you pay your coin, the vendor, the vendor sends the product, and the, mar the centralized market holds the coin until you say you've received your product, then it's released to the vendor. I think for small users, it's virtually safe. The only risk comes in is if you are actually ordering products, then your local post office might search the package or discover there's something suspicious. I think the most, most of the risk lies um, within the package actually crossing physical borders. And that is where the, probably the largest risk to an individual actually comes, is, is getting the handoff of the goods you want. We're grateful in a way in South Africa because our postal service is so useless. Um, something might get lost, uh, which, which it has done in the past. Uh, it's, it's, it will normally take about two or three weeks from Europe, but it can take up to two months. We've heard so much about dark markets. We had to see one for ourselves. So now I'm just um, firing up Tor. Cool, so just entering the dot onion address we got given. Alright. And there you have it. We're on. Raw LSD crystal. But people aren't just using the dark web for drugs. An unmonitored system means there's virtually no limits to what you can do. Contraception and sort of reproductive rights is a, is a big issue around the world. Um, it's still illegal in large parts of the world. Um, and so there's, there's the debate around should someone be able to, to purchase birth control on one morning after pill via a, a, an international supplier. Um, is that really the same as going and buying yourself five kilos of crack cocaine? In dictatorships and authoritarian regimes, if you look at the Great Firewall of China, um, you've, got, you've got journalists, media, I mean, even WikiLeaks is hosted on the dark web. It's a great tool for activism, um, and it's a very necessary tool in a world where we're becoming increasingly censored. The recent increase in digital surveillance means that privacy and self-expression are more precious than ever. Freedom of speech is not something that can be taken for granted. Um, uh, because we're one of very few countries that probably enjoys it to this extent. And all anonymity does is ensure that you can air your viewpoint without fear of being persecuted for it. And, and a good example of this was during the Arab Spring a couple of years ago. A lot of the organization and coordination of the uprisings was conducted via, via tour. Um, or using TOR to secure communications out of those various countries um, at the point when there were massive internet crackdowns on traditional services. The dark web is, it's, it's freedom, it's liberty, it's people, it's people fighting to protect what essentially the internet, I think, was created to do, and that is empower people without having to be surveilled, allow people to have a voice um, without manipulating that or persecuting people for that. I've had very affirming experiences. All of my experiences have made me 
I don't know, like, it sounds very cheesy, but almost like believe in the, the good of humanity. Because like, there have been examples where guys didn't need to help me out. It would have been in their best interest to fuck me over. And they did the exact opposite. They went out of their way to make sure that I was not only taken care of, but compensated for more than I was like liable for. Your digital footprint is a lot larger than you think or you know. And we should all be taking steps to cover that up as much as possible. Because, I mean... Otherwise, who are you leaving it for?